In this video, we're going to take a look at creating rectangles and polygons inside of our sketch environment. Up on our Create panel, we have a flyout that might say two-point rectangle for you at the very top, or it might show something else. Now, the reason for that is the default button becomes the last command you used in that flyout. Here, it just so happens I had used slot last. If I choose a two-point rectangle here, that now becomes my default button on that flyout. Now, as you create a rectangle, you are basically selecting two points, each corner. So I'll go ahead and choose up here in the upper left, and then here to the lower right. Now, as I select those, you can see geometric constraints pop up on screen to let me know that this is very much a rectangle. It's perpendicular in the corners and parallel for each of the horizontal and vertical lines. And I also have a horizontal control here as well. I'm going to choose OK. You can also grab the rectangle by right-clicking and choosing two-point rectangle from your marking menu. Now, my favorite type of rectangle to create is not this two-point rectangle. It's actually the two-point center rectangle. Now, when I choose this one, instead of picking two corner points, I can actually pick the center first and then pick the extents of this rectangle, and it will build around that origin point. You can see the difference here is I have two construction lines across this holding that rectangle in place. So here it's basically centered around that point by me using the origin. So this one won't be controlled other than those geometric rules that were already applied to it. Now another rectangle type we have is a three point. This one can help you build a rectangle on a certain angle. When I choose this one, I'll just do so over here. First corner point second corner point, and third corner point. And there you can see I don't have a horizontal on that. It's basically just at an angle now. We also have our polygon down here at the bottom. A lot of people will use polygon to create a square. So here for my sides, instead of six, I'll choose four. Now the inscribed and circumscribed, I really don't need to worry about this because I'm not trying to build it inside or outside of a circle. So here I'll just go ahead and pick a center point of the polygon and then build my polygon as you see there. So that creates a four-sided, equal-sided object. I'm going to put a circle in here fast, and we'll do an inscribed and circumscribed. So I'll go back to polygon. Here I'll choose a inscribed polygon, and I'm going to choose six sides. I'll pick my center point of the circle to build the polygon, and as you can see, it stays inscribed of the circle. I'll go to this point here, and there's that polygon. If I do the same type of polygon, but this time circumscribed, picking my center point will build the polygon outside the circle. Really, the only time you're going to use inscribe versus circumscribe is if you already have existing geometry you're creating this with. If it's just something that you're creating off in space somewhere, or is your first initial shape inside of a sketch, you probably won't need to choose inscribed or circumscribed. I'll do that over here with an eight-sided polygon to create that initial shape. Now, these little icons you're seeing around here, these are pattern constraints. That's just basically telling me that these are all equal. I'll say OK. And again, there's my nice polygon. If I need to define sizing for dimensions on that, I can do that at a later time with my parametric dimensioning controls. But for right now, we're just trying to get a feel for how the command operates. Do a zoom extents here by double-clicking my center mouse wheel. And just to recap, we talked about a two-point rectangle, a center-point rectangle, or a three-point rectangle, which also is a three-point center rectangle as well. And then we also talked about some different polygons here. A couple of things to take away from this. The center-point rectangle over here being one of my favorites because I can build it symmetrically around my origin. So whenever you're building symmetric parts around your XZ plane or the YZ plane, that's a very handy one to have. If you find that you're using that command so much, you can actually change it from the two-point rectangle here in your marking menu to the three-point rectangle or the center-point rectangle, whichever one you prefer more. This is a fully customized menu. This is just what you're seeing out of the box, though. 